Yeah, it's a whole setup where you get social acceptance for living a certain life and showing certain results. And we're trained so that that social acceptance becomes part of our self-acceptance. So if you're not achieving success as has been defined for you, then there's that voice that's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm a failure. Uh, my life is a waste. I'm not good enough. Uh, that's that's a, a psychological pressure that torments people. Mm -hmm. Even if like another part of them knows that, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. This is important. Even though I'm not making a lot of money, even though I'm not looking like a success, I know this is important. But then there's that other voice saying, no, you're not. You're wasting your time. Your father was much more successful. You don't even have life insurance. You know, you don't even have investments. You're totally, da, 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 da. there's this, there's a conflict. And that I think is a, definitely a source of anxiety and um, it's this psychic drain that prevents us from being fully healthy. It's just like this programming that, that most of us carry. Yeah. If you ever have a family or even when you interact with young people, um, maybe they're, they won't have to do as much deprogramming and they'll be able to start. Like, I feel like that's kind of true of my kids. You know, I spent many years deprogramming from the cultural programs that had been instilled inside of me about what a successful, worthy life looks like. And finally, after I did enough unlearning and enough deprogramming, I was able to turn toward what I'm here to do. So I feel like my kids are maybe able to, to start at a much younger age um, and not have to go through those years and decades of self-struggle. How do you do that with them? For one thing, avoiding sending them to normal schools. And if they do end up in a normal school, then to make sure that I don't become the ally of the school that wants to attach their self-esteem to their academic performance. And I remember one interaction I had with, with Matthew's school where he wasn't doing his homework. And they're basically, the teacher called me and they're basically like, you know, you, you, you're gonna have to make sure he does his homework. Like asking me to pressure him to do that. Now, how do you pressure a child? Usually it's through the giving and withholding of approval and, and associating that. And the way you signal approval mm -hmm. is through with punishments and, and stuff. And so basically wanting me to become an ally in programming him to do the program, to, to seek the rewards that the system gives him, to, to reinforce the association of good school performance with being a good person. Like that's, that's so if you can avoid doing that with young people and instead uh, validate their reluctance. Like I was like, yeah, I wouldn't do that homework either. What a waste of time. Um, like, what are you really interested in? You know, that, 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 so then, you know, then he doesn't have that baggage when he grows up. Whereas my parents, like, bless their hearts, but yeah. they really thought that I would be in trouble in life. I wouldn't have a good life if I didn't do my homework and get good grades. And they were, um, you know, they gave me a lot of pressure to do that. And, and I, ended up torturing myself a lot because I didn't want to do the work and I procrastinate and what's wrong with me. And I would have this inner struggle to fight myself in order to be worthy and, and worthy of approval, um, worthy of good things in life. I had to fight myself. So I think that inner struggle is part of, of what we call mental illness. Mm. Like that generates so much internal tension that something breaks in some people. In a lot of ways, I, I'm, I'm now past that. I mean, gosh, I'm 50 now, you know, so I mean, I hope I would have gotten over some of it by now and some of it still comes up. But I think part of it was my growing understanding of the deep wrongness in the way that the world is right now. Um, just understanding the way that the world system functions and 
part of it was direct experience that showed me that that the reality and that the explanation of the world that I've been given was wrong, was was way, way too narrow and limited through kind of spiritual experiences, psychedelic experiences, things like that. Um, yeah, these shook me loose from the reality story that I had been indoctrinated with. Yeah, and also maybe encountering people who lived in a different way. People who like I deeply admired who didn't buy in to those to that system of rewards, who didn't care about success in that way. And also seeing that the people who did achieve that success weren't really happy. Didn't do them any good in the end. Didn't stop them from, you know, having divorce, from having depression, from being addicted. The rewards looked empty. And that's a crisis for a lot of people. You, you, the, the emptiness of the rewards of success is revealed to you, but there's no replacement. So there's a period of being lost. And that's when when the best medicine is something that gives you a view of another, uh, another kind of success or another kind of well-being. Someone can come in and model it or you can have a spiritual experience or something that, that like the, the old story has to begin to break down, I think, before the light from outside that story can pierce through. We get uh, glimpses by grace of what life can be and who we could be in that life. And those then provide some guidance. Because once you have that experience, then the old reality seems all the more intolerable because you've seen something else. Like no one can tell you that, oh, this is all there is. Like, especially the first encounter, like, mm. like, you're like, yes, here it is. What is it? God really can't say, but it is, it just feels like a strong invitation into who I will be and those are such precious experiences. And yeah, if you've had one of those experiences and, or anyone who might be listening to our conversation, um, even to, to bring that experience into presence, to like call it up, to remember how you felt at that moment uh, and just to do honor to that experience, that, that will exercise an effect too. Like that was real. What you saw the, could have been something you saw through another person who demonstrated some kind of courage or generosity or, or kindness or power that called to you or just an experience you had that was outside the normal bounds of what you thought was real and that, that called you into a new being. And, and maybe you didn't listen to that call or you couldn't, or you weren't ready. Maybe that call is something that, that persists over years and comes again and again in different forms. So it's not like you're a failure if you didn't immediately totally transform your life. The, that, that's not the requirement. Uh, but what is helpful is to recognize the preciousness of that and to accept the gift of it. And to, to as I said, to do it honor. So, yeah, I mean, I would even like ask us right now to take a minute to uh, bring to mind one of those people or experiences and just to do it honor, you know, just to like, yeah, that happened. Mm. That person existed, exists.